there's, there's no rush at all this morning, is there? Are, are we late today? No, are we on time, right <laughs> on time, right? Right, there's no rush whatsoever. We absolutely mm. did not forget of, of you guys at all. Welcome to another one of our live session. Uh, we are here to answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand. We do that every single Sunday. We do that from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every single morning in New Zealand time. But why are we the one answering people's questions, Laura? Well, this is Robin and I'm Laura and we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide and basically has all the information you need on planning a trip in New Zealand. Whether you're doing like a family road trip for two weeks in a camper van or if you're here on a working holiday looking to work and travel around the country for an entire year, we have all the tips on that website for you. So that's nzpocketguide.com. But because we know that not everyone likes to read through endless pages on websites, we also do this live Q&A session on YouTube at every single Sunday, 8 a.m. New Zealand time. So you guys can come onto the live chat and ask your questions straight to us and we can answer them for you. But throughout the week as well, if you do have any questions and you maybe forget uh, well, forget to join us for our live Q&A session, then you can put your questions in the comments of any of our YouTube videos. And we also pull those questions together so we can answer them for you during this live session as well. But just to let you know, times around the world, wherever the times may be. I'm not catching up. <laughs> so like I say that we do this every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time, but around the world that is in the UK and France on a Saturday evening around 8 or 9 p.m. In the US that is on a Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. EST or 11 a.m. PST. And on a Sunday morning, bright and early in India at 12.30 a.m. And in Australia, again, that's pretty early at 6 a.m. in the morning on a Sunday. So, yeah, that is what we are doing here today. So um, the best place to come and ask your questions is right now on the live chat. So um, we already have some questions. And we already have some questions. So shall we jump into yeah, it? Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So my new sis for you. I think that's how you say that, um, says, four seasons in one day when traveling in the north and the south island in December, are one clothes like a shell coat and or a down jacket necessary? And of course, good morning, Robin and Laura. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, you definitely need a soft shell um, just because it gets really windy and the, 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 the weather is changing a lot. Uh, if you watch the videos from New Zealand's Biggest Gap here, the video of us traveling in New Zealand, which are on this very channel, you will see what we wear. We usually wear one of those black soft shell and we have layers of merino wool jumpers and t-shirts and everything underneath, which allow us to kind of remove some layers as it goes. Um, so yeah, definitely necessary. Uh, big down jacket, Laura, would you have one in uh, December? In December, I wouldn't take a down jacket because <laughs> December is um, during the summer season. So usually if you just have a soft shell jacket with, you know, some extra layers, maybe just a sort of, light merino wool like full or, or a wool like thermal layer underneath maybe just pack it in your bag just in case it gets a bit cold but usually yeah a down jacket is a is a little bit too too much that's a little yeah. bit overboard you'll probably get a bit too hot in a down jacket to be honest but yeah like robin said soft soft shell soft shell coat would be good can you say that three times that's in really hard to say <laughs> soft shell, soft all right, A02 boys, say 11 a.m. in California, USA. Whoop, whoop. Cool. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. You are awesome for showing up another day. Mm -hmm. um, uh, A02 boy was here last week. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I'm still planning my adventure going north to south in April. What is the best option for the Glow Warm Cave tools? Well, there is actually um, multiple videos on this channel where we compare all of them. So I will uh, advise just typing Glow Warm in the search bar of, of our channel or on YouTube, you type Glow Warm and NZ Pocket Guide and you'll find like a lot of content. But uh, it really depends in short, right? It really depends what you're after. If you're after an epic adventure, you want to do one of those Blackwater or Blackwater-like um, uh, tools. So like tubing yeah. in a cave and doing maybe a bit of, you know, caving yeah. as well, yeah. So I would recommend a company called Way Too More Adventures, which is really awesome. Uh, or there is also the legendary Blackwater uh, rafting company. So that's two companies that uh, that we would recommend. The video and, that we have... Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, they're based in Waitomo, yeah, which is on the North Island. Yeah. 
And if you don't feel like an adventure, then you have a little town near Milford Sound called Teana that has uh, you go on the boat and then after you do a tour and you see some glowworms and some an awesome cave. Or you can visit a few caves as well near way to more. It's just all walking tools. But check out our videos on the subject so you can like kind of get a feel of for what you would like more. Because we've done all those kind of tools. So you can see the kind of soft and mellow ones and the absolutely gushing, epic, raging one uh, in, in the in the cave. It's absolutely crazy. Reggie Matthew, that's been a long time. Hey man, what's hey. happening? Uh, what's up, Robin and Laura? So due to the virus that's happening, how's the travel safety? for the people who are traveling by now. Um, so if you are coming from um, China, I think there are some restrictions. Uh, or if you're transiting through China, there are some restrictions. Um, so we actually have a friend which is coming to visit soon. And her flight was going through Shanghai. And what she did, she just changed her flight. And it cost her like an extra, I think she said $150. Something yeah, something like that. Like that. So it cost her an extra $150. And now she's transiting through Dubai. And that, that makes the process super smooth, super easy. And that's mean that she's not going to have to go th jump through many hoops uh, in order to come. But aside from that, New Zealand is pretty good. Um, you know, they have uh, 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 chartered the flight and got everybody that they had around the Wuhan area. So there is so far no cases here and uh, New Zealand is also helping some of the South Pacific Islands, both um, expatriating some of their citizens as well as holding some people in quarantine just to make sure that everybody is safe. But that's basically, um, that's basically where we're at. Um, just make sure that when you book your flight, as of now, right, you know, if the virus is eradicated by the time you're flying, it's fine. But just make sure that for now, maybe your transit uh, is not through uh, any places in China. That yeah. would be that would be our tip, uh, just because. Uh, and and um, I don't want to quote and to tell you guys exactly what is the the procedure because it changes by the day. You know they keep on announcing stuff. Yeah, they um, assess it every. I think Immigration New Zealand says they assess the situation every forty every 40, 48 hours, and then you know it's extended for fourteen day periods on how long people would have to be in quarantine if they're coming from China, arriving in New Zealand. So, yeah, that's all getting updated so often that it's kind of hard to yeah. give advice on that right now. Because <laughs> by the time you guys rewatch the video, it's going to be changed. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, oh, uh, Reggie Matthews says it's all set for May. Nice. Coming. Cool. It's coming quite fast. Did you did you buy everything you need? Do you have all your travel gadget and all your clothes? Are you ready to go? Um, all right. So, Michelle Elizabeth say hello, guys. Hi. Hi. Um, I have thoughts of I have thoughts of building a tiny home in New Zealand. I'm a mountain girl and would like to find a beautiful plot of land with precious views that is remote, yet Continue. relatively close to a cozy town to grab groceries and such. Any ideas where to start looking for something like this in the South Island areas? Suggestions? Uh, maybe around uh, Methven, the, the the town of Methven, because you can drive to Christchurch, you know, relatively fast it's not it's not the, yeah. the, the shortest drive but relatively fast and you'll be in the southern alps which is absolutely stunning and also it's a part of the country which has very little amount of people so probably the cost of land would be a little bit cheaper but obviously we are not uh property expert by no. any stretch of the mean so that'd be that the other place i would be looking around would be around the town of lumsden um and 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 uh and the southland basically region which is for by basically the same reason you can drive to cities relatively with ease and also there is a lot of mountain and it's look really pretty and everything and there's not too many people yeah but, yeah uh, new zealand like it i mean wherever you are in the mountains you're probably well you're probably not going to be high up in the mountains but you know in a in a remote area and you're never going to be more than an hour away from a nearest town which yeah. will have all the essential supplies anyway so i think on the south island you can get away with being pretty much anywhere as long as you're not oh, like in a place where you can only access it by a five day hike yeah, i mean yeah. if you can access the place by road then you'll never be too far away from anywhere really yeah because new zealand is pretty small i mean we live in quite a remote area and 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 you know we still can do whatever we want whenever we want we were in oakland for most of the week this week and i was just about you know um, a few hours drive um but again all our property advice have to be taken with a massive grain of salt yeah. we are nowhere near expert um but hopefully that gives you a, a starting point michelle 
Um, Sagdas Osgun. Sagdas, how are you doing, man? Showing up quite often. Um, I like it. I like it. It's always around. Mm. Uh, hi, people. I am planning to come to New Zealand in August 2020. Is it good timing for finding seasonal job, etc.? Uh, to come there, start my working holiday visa. Where to find courses to build a tiny house? Okay, for the courses to build a tiny house, honestly, go on YouTube. Uh, there's a <laughs> ton of them. We are looking into something similar to that. We're just not going, uh, you know, we're not looking for lands and everything like Michelle is doing. But, you know, we're kind of interested in these kind of things. But, uh, yeah, YouTube, you get so much content there and so helpful and actually really in-depth and everything. So it's yeah. pretty cool. Anyway, uh, coming in August 2020 and looking for a seasonal job, um, it's great. So remember that when you arrive in August 2020, you will have to do quite a few paperwork and opening your bank account and all that. So you're not going to get started straight away. You're not going to hit the ground and find a work within a week and start working. That is just simply not going to happen because you have to open your bank account and you have to get your IRD number. So you, if you arrive in August, realistically, it's going to take you about two weeks until you have an IRD number and a functioning bank account and all that to be able to start working. So that would mean that you kind of get started around mid-August to September. And that's a perfect time for you to uh, get started on a working holiday visa. There is plenty of seasonal job. I will head to the town of Toranga, which is only about two and a half hours, I say, drive from Auckland, something yeah. like that. Two and a half hours drive south of Auckland. And there are some amazing places there which are working hostels. So you can stay in a hostel and the guys actually sort out the whole job for you and you instantly get accommodation job you're all sorted and because you are with a bunch of people that work as well you don't even necessarily need your own car just yet because everybody is carpooling to go to the same work yeah. so it's really friendly super fun and so i would do that and then when you start getting your footing in new zealand then at this point you buy your car and you decide to travel don't forget you travel enough don't arrive in new zealand just for work it would be really sad um anything you want to add no okay, you okay. Thoroughly. Aulak. <laughs> oh, I think I said your name properly. I hope. Our so Aulak says, um, hey guys, this is Aulak, a Pakistani currently living in Abu Dhabi, UAE. I can't secure more IELTS score, but I want to settle in New Zealand. Please guide me if you don't mind. Regards. So this has to do with immigration in New Zealand. And the law in New Zealand is that if you are not a registered immigration advisor, you do not have the right to give immigration advice. So that's a very specific immigration question. And if we answer it for you, we will be liable for problems. And mm -hmm. we don't like problems. Um, so the best place for you to get started on your search is to head to immig immigration.govt.nz. This is the Immigration New Zealand's website with all the information that you need. And that's the only place we can send you to. Um, also, because we're here to help people traveling in New Zealand and not immigrating. So we answer a few questions like Michelle's question about like, you know, tiny houses and everything, just because it's a point of interest of us and that we may know one tiny thing. But we always tell people we do not know about this. Yeah. So we don't know about immigrating in New Zealand. This is not really what we do. The only immigration um, thing that we know in New Zealand are the visitor's visa, um, the working holiday visa because it's for backpackers. And we also have our own experience of immigrating in New Zealand. However, we can't really share our own experience because things change all the time. So that's the reason why most of the time we try to tell people we can't give you immigration advice because legal reasons and lack of knowledge. And we uh, like to be a serious channel here and be like, you know, not, not say things that we're not 100% sure about. So, yeah. Uh, Reggie Mathieu say thanks for the info. Oh, he gave us a uh, super chat. Yeah, hey. <laughs> keep it up. <laughs> yeah. like I was answer. just seeing that on the corner of my eye. <laughs> I didn't see because it mostly empty, so I didn't yeah. see that working. Ah, oh, it's funny. <laughs> I love it. Thank you very oh, much. Thank man. you. That is a funny. Uh, <laughs> that's rare that I actually laugh at those kind of games. That's a really funny one. Okay, and Sagdas was asking about a course for building a tiny house. YouTube, you're in the right place. Just Google yeah. something else. Stop <laughs> watching. Why are you watching us? Just watch about tiny house. <laughs> Start houses. your tiny house dream. <laughs> All right, but actually don't because we're going to be answering some questions. I think that's a question that everybody wants an answer about. Let's okay. be honest. Like, there is no one that do not want to know about this. Um, and once we answer this question, we're going to go and answer Terra Lighting and Chuck and Alok has all your questions, guys. But we're just going to go through this one. So Christine on YouTube asked, what are popular snacks or candies that makes great gifts to bring back home? 
All right, so we're going to be doing a bit of a snack talk right here, talking about all the awesome snacks that are available in New Zealand. So let me preface with, uh, no, let us preface with a little bit of wording. Candies, lollies, sweets, what, what's, yeah. the, what's the wording here? So in New Zealand, the term that New Zealanders use for things like candies or sweets or basically, you know, like sweet snacks is lollies. And that actually refers to all types of candies, not just, you know, uh, sweets on a popsicle stick that's it's lollies is an encompassing word of yeah. all candy so if you hear someone if you go to a supermarket and say where do I get the sweets it's probably best to say like where do I get the lollies and you'll probably be probably be pointed out to the right place for instance so just to make that obvious to you guys for all those times though I got completely desperately <laughs> I know, lost like, in I don't supermarket want lollies. Lollies. <laughs> all right so uh we're going to be talking about all the stuff which are kind of typically New Zealand and there are some expensive ones there are some cheap ones there's everything in between and just think that you know I think it's just you wouldn't really find anywhere else in the world because I think that's what usually makes the best gift yeah and uh we're going to go by brands so the first brand that we have for you guys is called Allen's it's definitely not the fanciest one. It's definitely not. It's just something typically New Zealand that you get for either the older people or the kids. Um, so, yeah, so it's a very basic brand. And they have something called the Odd Fellows. So it's a bag of, if you were to compare them to something more European or American, it would be a bunch of Mentos in it. So they look like Mentos. It's like mint, kind of uh, semi hard shell candy with soft inside. And, uh, yeah, they just taste like mint. And um, then they're not great, but they're typically New Zealand. That, that, that's all I'm going to leave it at. No, yeah. I move on. Okay. <laughs> I so, don't want to say anything. <laughs> they're <mean>. not great. <laughs> okay. I mean, everyone has tastes. That's yeah. fine to have taste from yeah. it. That's true. That's true. Um, okay. So next brand on the list is Cadbury. Now, if you're from the UK, you've probably heard of Cadbury. But um, in New Zealand and Australia, Cadbury is a whole different level. There's some very different... Um, Cadbury products that you can find and one of the most kiwi of the Cadbury products is one called Jaffa's and um, this usually comes in a bag and what they are is just basically spherical shaped chocolate balls basically coated in sort of a crispy candy shell and they're orange colored um what they used to do in the town of Dunedin is have Jaffa races where they would label all these sweets with a number throw them down Baldwin Street, which is the steepest street street in New Zealand. Used to, apparently, has, has changed. but I said used to, yeah. Because, oh, yeah, because yeah. uh, yeah, I'm not sure if they still do that anymore. But yeah. it's kind of like, a, yeah, it used to be a big thing where they used to do Jaffa races. So Jaffa has become quite an iconic sweet in New Zealand. So picking up a bag of Jaffas from the supermarket would be a good treat um, to buy someone as a gift. But also another one from Cadbury is chocolate fish and um, this is basically a marshmallow um well fish shaped marshmallow coated in chocolate and uh, this is the sweet that all tours will well most tours in new zealand will probably give you at some point during the tour if there's a snack you'll go to if there's a fish. snack to be had on a tour that you're going it's probably going to be a <laughs> chocolate fish so yeah that's that's another thing you can also pick up. Usually just buy them separately. So it's like one little bag of one chocolate fish. That's a waste of plastic, in my it opinion. Is, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. The next brand is Pascal. So Pascal, P A S C A L L, um, is a pretty popular brand of, uh, of candies, lollies, or any. any whatever you say. Um, and you will find that in every groceries, convenience stores, and, and all that. Um, so they have a bunch of stuff that they do, which are apparently typically New Zealand. But again, it's just a New Zealand version of the same thing you have back home, right? But um, yeah, so they do jet planes. So it's uh, kind of soft gummy candies shaped like an airplane. Um, very popular with kids, obviously. Uh, they do something called milk shakes. So they are, you know, those kind of uh, rectangle candies which are wrapped in paper that usually, you know, they're fruity flavors and everything. Well, those ones are the one milk flavor ones. Do you know the one which are left in the bag at the end when you have like a party bag, the one no one wants? Well, that's they the one. They have a full bag of that. Exactly. <laughs> so God knows why. If you really hate someone, get them a bag of that. <laughs> Uh, wine gums, they are uh, the wine gums, the Pascal white gums are the same than you would find in the UK or, or in, in the US or Canada. Wine gums are quite popular. 
But if you don't know what they are, they are soft gummy candies, which just then become really sticky when you start eating it. So they stick to all your teeth and it tastes really good. Um, and then they do something called pineapple lumps. And that's probably one of the most popular and most well-known candy in New Zealand. So pineapple lumps are it's kind of a paste which has a chemical pineapple taste in it and it's coated of milk chocolate. It is super popular here. Uh, sometimes they do some like crossovers when you have some pineapple lumps, ice creams and stuff like that. Like it's really an iconic yeah. New Zealand candy. So it's definitely worth trying. It's definitely not bad. Um, it's it's actually pretty good. It's, it's not odd either. <laughs> yeah, it's odd. Uh, it's odd at first. It's kind of like, it's fun to try like once, yeah. once or twice, but... I I understand why it's not popular all around the world, basically. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's not bad. It's not bad. Like it's just it's it, worth a try. Yeah, it get, yeah. Take some time to get used to. Yeah. But yeah. Um and then moving on, there's a brand called Rainbow. Okay, there's a, a brand called Rainbow, and they do something called Big Fish, which uh, you know those chocolate fish I was talking about a little bit earlier. Well, they do a basically a bigger version of a chocolate fish. There seems to be a real big um yeah, um emphasis on eating marshmallow fish in New Zealand and there's another brand that does that so if you want to get more out of your chocolate fish experience and get a bigger chocolate fish then rainbow is usually the way to go indeed um okay next brand is RJ uh, is that what you say RJ's yeah, yeah. RJ's so RJ's it's uh, it's pretty easy to recognize because out of all the super colorful like candies and lolly aisle that you can find is the one thing which is black and silver you know it's kind of like just standing out mm. by being a dull color, which makes no sense, but that's <laughs> what it is. Anyway, and it does it, it is black because it's all about licorice. Um, so love it or hate it, uh, licorice has lovers and haters, that's for sure. And um, yeah, so they do the normal kind of licorice, uh, you know, those black candies that you eat. Oh, but they also do chocolate coated and uh, raspberry coated and all those kind of things. And they also do raspberry licorice for, for those that want to say they eat licorice but don't like licorice. Um, I don't know why this became a thing one day, but someone decided to do something licorice, like the tweezers you yeah. know, that are licorice but not licorice. Anyway, um, so yeah, so those ones are really popular and typically in New Zealand as well. All right, the next brand we have, well, I'm not sure if this really is a brand, but Robin has it down on our notes as poo. <laughs> I'm not sure if the brand is actually called Poo. But, I don't know uh, <laughs> what it is, but that's that's basically what they are. Yeah. Right? yeah. So what you'll find in a lot of gift stores in New Zealand is a little bag of, for instance, Pukeko Poo. Pukeko is a type of bird in New Zealand. You can find Kiwi Poo. You can find Sheep Poo, for instance, and the list goes on. So are there real Poo in the box? Well, no, they're not real poo in the box, but in the bag, you basically have a, on the front of the bag, you have a picture of, you know, like a sheep with some droppings behind it. And the, it's meant to show that the bag apparently has droppings inside, but it's just chocolate balls, people. It's yeah, fine. Just milk chocolate. Don't worry, you could eat the poo. It is not real poo. So, so if you think bringing chocolate to your family wasn't nice enough, just bring them poo and it turns out that it's true. Yeah, so if you, if you have someone in your family that has a bit of a sense of humor, likes a little bit of that, like, likes some bad jokes, then usually getting them a bag of, of kiwi poo or sheep droppings or pukeko or pukeko poo yeah oh yeah um, so this is, is basically the dad's joke of the gift to bring home yeah so yeah <laughs> that and it's also a candy yeah <laughs> all right and last but not least it's probably our favorite i'd say it's a brand called whitakers uh whitakers are very uh famous in new zealand for doing some of the best chocolate there you can get big chocolate block um you can get like little like individually wrapped chocolate as well, like uh, by uh, slabs. Sorry, that's what they yeah. call it. So um, you can have some special edition for some uh, special areas of New Zealand. So you could have like Whitakers with plums of Hoax Bay, which is a region of New Zealand, um, all those kind of things. So yeah, so they're, they're really popular here. And um, yeah, definitely worth getting those one. That's our favorite if we were to recommend you to bring like yeah. one like some type of chocolate and, and it would be those ones. So either the big blocks. So if you want to make it really New Zealand, you can get a crossover between Whitaker's and LNP, which is a soda here. So there is a block of chocolate, which is Whitaker LNP, has the taste of the New Zealand soda called LNP. Um, or you can get Hockey Pokey, which is a definitely a New Zealand flavor, which is um, smashed bits of dried honey in it. Um, and it's, it's, it's honey and chocolate. So yeah, yeah, but yeah, definitely those ones are the best and the one that we like the most. It is. Anyway, so, 
uh, Christine, I hope that helps. Uh, but this is the snacks and candies that we will bring back home uh, from New Zealand because they're pretty awesome and they show what New Zealand is. And uh, yeah, I hope that there is enough choices for you right here. If you do have any questions of your own, put them in the comments of this video or in the live chat if you're watching us live. And if you find this video useful, a free way to help us out is to click like and to subscribe. It's always cool. We are making our way to about 15,000 subscribers, which would be pretty Woo! awesome to pass in the next few weeks. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and tune again. Anyway, let's go back to the live chat. Uh, what is going on? Okay. So Chuck P says, hi, guys. I made it to New Zealand here now. It, it, it's every bit as amazing as I thought it would be. And I'm just getting started. Amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Chuck, where are you at at the moment? What are you doing? What are you up to? Yeah. Why are you finding New Zealand amazing? Tell where us have everything. you been? Yeah. Uh, Terra Lighting says, where are you right now? We just came back from Auckland. We spent about a week in Auckland, um, you know, for all the um for the things actually we can tell you we also do guide travel guides to uh, some of the south pacific islands so you know us for nz pocket guide here but there's also something called fijipocketguide.com where you can find all the uh, travel tips for fiji so there's nz pocketguide.com fijipocketguide.com there's also tonga pocketguide.com and now we just launched nue pocketguide.com which is n i ue pocketguide.com so we actually just launched that two days ago so if you want to see our brand new website you can check it out yeah um I'll, I'll type it in the comment for you guys if you're keen and so so to launch the website we did something pretty exceptional uh do you want to tell them or do i tell them uh i, I can tell them yeah. so yeah to launch that new website we did a really uh a really cool thing in our opinion which was um we uh donated um metal reusable straws to all the restaurants on this island and so, all the results and all the results on the island so that we could essentially eliminate the need for single-use plastic straws on this island so you know that's less plastic going into the landfills less plastic going into the ocean so we thought that would be a really cool way to kick off our new website and yeah just also give something back to the Okay, it's a small country, right? But it's not every day that we can brag and say that we eliminated, eliminated plastic straws in an entire country, just the two of us, all yeah. in one day. That was pretty awesome. So we did really enjoy doing that. So we went to Auckland to celebrate that um, and to just get that rolling. Um, so yeah, that was, yeah, that was quite cool. Um, our luck. Uh, again, guys, thank you very much for all the questions and the comments. I will read everything, right? Um, so I would like to say thank you so much for the valuable piece of information, but kindly make a video on immigration registered firm so you can find this information as well on Immigration New Zealand, uh, uh, on the Immigration New Zealand website. We can't elaborate on that because it changes all the time as well. And it's just outside of what we actually have the right to do as a non-registered um, people. Itoho Wo Martins. Hi, is it possible for me to get a job and change my visa status from visit visas to working visa? No, it's not because you are not allowed to get a job in New Zealand with a visit visa. You will not be even interviewed if you do have a visit visa. You need to work visa in order to get a job in New Zealand. That is as simple as that. Um, Sagdas says, first he was in Auckland. Oh, I was asking what, uh, no, what was... What Where has he been? Or? Uh, what is he going to do? Because he's, going in, uh, he's coming in May, I think, Sagdas. August. Oh, no, August, yeah. yeah. Okay, Sagdas coming in August. First Auckland, then Taranga to travel and work. I'm drawing a map from you, so it's very useful, and I'm very thankful for your recommendation, guys. I'm following you from Imzir, Turkey, with best... Oh, cool, Turkey. Cool. That's cool. That's different. I love it. Yeah. Um, that's a country I would like to visit one day. Um, uh, Sagdas, yeah, seriously, pretty easy. Uh, you can also see, like, we do a lot of itineraries as well, so we take the map and we write things down, but yeah, definitely. So get yourself set started in Auckland and then head to Taranga, and uh, yeah, if I can give you the name of a hostel, that would be the Pacific Coast Lodge when you go to Taranga. If you stay with those guys, they're the working hostel that we like uh, We like very much over there. And uh, yeah, Matt and his wife, Sarah, I think, are really awesome people, and they'll find you a job in a minute. Yeah. Um, Reggie must you so say oh yeah because I was telling him that I just can still keep looking at his I thing. Know. I just keep on looking <laughs> still at still on our screen so that just to keep the channel going. So, yeah, you're very you're very kind, <laughs> Reggie Matthews. Um okay, so Michelle Elizabeth says one more question. Thank you kindly. Are there parts of the South South Island known for horsey farms? I would like to find land and own a few horses as well. Thank you so much. 
I don't know about that. There are horses everywhere in New Zealand. Everybody owns horse. I don't think there is any piece of land in New Zealand where you wouldn't be able to own a yeah. horse. Yeah. So, no. I mean, if usually if you have a piece of land uh, and you own it yourself, you can definitely get yourself a horse. Um, it looks like yeah. you have a very specific dream. That <laughs> Your dream is getting specificer and yeah. specificer by the minute. There's definitely lots of but, places yeah. on the South Island that, yeah, I, I guess that have horses for sale. There's a lot of farms with horses. There's a lot of horse trekking you can do in the South island but in terms of buying horses and things that's not really our expertise yeah. so we can't really elaborate too much on that i'm afraid um yeah jeff jeff i do guys i'm very sorry about all the names i i, I hope that you guys are not offended when i read the names and i just butcher them <laughs> but uh I, I mean it with all respect possible and available i promise <laughs> Okay, so Jeff Addo says, hey guys, do you recommend booking a bus tour like the Kiwi Experience when arriving or way in advance? How to book this when arriving? You can book that pretty much everywhere at any time. It's very easy to book and they are always on discount. So don't get fooled by all those things that always tell you like, oh my God, um, you know, there is, there is always a sale. Uh, you know, it's on sale right now. It's expiring and everything. As soon as this, the sale number one is expiring, it's instantly replaced by sale number two and there's always discount. So yeah. don't panic about it and they're always really, really big discount. So um, you decide to book it whenever you feel it's convenient for you or whenever the exact pass that you want is on discount. So like that, you know, you don't miss out on that. But um, I will uh, send you to um, NZ Pocket Guide actually because we actually have an article on there that will help you a lot because it gives you a lot of tips on how to save money while doing that and how to compare them as well which is going to be quite cool. So on NZ Pocket Guide, so it's nzpocketguide.com. You will find a link in the description right now. And then you're going to click on travel tips. And then you're going to click on transportation. And then you're going to click on bus. And on there, we wrote like, I think about 20 articles with all our knowledge about all those passes. Um, and with links to the correct pages as well. And we give you even some tips. There is an article, which is, let me just try to find a name for you. Um, yeah, five tips to get a better deal on the backpacker bus pass in New Zealand. So you read that and you get some tips on there. And we also have 10 tips to make the most out of your backpacker bus trip. So we literally even tell you when to book even your single journeys and all of that. So there is a lot of information there. Yeah. So again, you go on nzpocketguide.com. Then you go on, uh, God damn it, travel tips, transportation, and then bus. And you'll be all good. And uh, we also have a few of those um, those those videos as well on individual subject like that. But I will definitely go and read that carefully, you know, and slowly and at your own pace. Like I personally prefer um, reading on the website on nzpocketguide.com. I prefer reading rather than watching videos because like that. Sometimes I speak too fast. Sometimes Laura speak too fast. I have a strong accent, so. Uh, it's a bit easier to kind of go and do your work because you're about to spend quite a quite a lot of money on those bus passes. So, yeah, but well, just to answer well. the question on how to book it when you arrive, yeah. you have several options. You can do it online, which actually, if you're connecting from a computer from New Zealand compared to from overseas, you do tend to find cheaper rates. Um, but you can also, if you know about what 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 are those websites? Proxy websites? Yeah, are they uh, yeah, pro proxy websites. Yeah. So, but also, if you know about proxy websites and you know you browse. The the Kiwi Experience um, website from New Zealand, you can usually find uh, you know cheaper prices that way. But also, when you arrive in New Zealand, you can book Kiwi Experience um, through their office, which they have in Auckland Central. They also can be booked through pretty much any hostel in Auckland, Christchurch, yeah. Queenstown, any of the sort any of travel agents. Any travel agents can yeah book that for you. It's a very popular product at that at most sort of travel agents where backpacker hostels are because Kiwi experience is more of a backpacker bus experience. And um, that's another way that you can book onto those trips as well. Um, what she said, yeah. uh, Reggie Matthews says, any recommendations for the best ice cream place in Christchurch, Auckland and Queenstown? Ice cream place. Uh, in Auckland, there's Jabo ice cream, which is really good. In Queenstown, if you go out of Queenstown and you go to Arotan, you can go Patagonia, mm, yeah, which has amazing ice cream over there. And the location is really fantastic. In Christchurch, I don't have one in mind. No, neither do I. Maybe I'm not really... Yeah, I'm not sorry. really sure about the ice creams in Christchurch. And yeah, a lot of the eateries change quite often in Christchurch as yeah. well. So 
Yeah, sorry, we can't really give you a recommendation. Well, you go organize in Queenstown. Yeah. So, so Giapo, um, Giapo, like it's the Italian word, Giapo, <laughs> and uh, Patagonia, like the country. And Patagonia is not in Queenstown, but it's in our town. But it's a really popular place to visit from yeah, Queenstown. So they, definitely worth it. They do have a Patagonia ice cream actually in Queenstown as well on the lakefront because it's kind of like a, a brand that's in both Arrowtown, Queenstown, and uh, Wanaka, so they do have one in Queenstown as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. But well, Arrowtown's usually a nicer place to go. <laughs> I don't think I've ever even. Oh yeah, I've yeah. never even consider getting an ice cream in Queenstown. There's so much to do. Yeah. Now, so <laughs> get an ice cream in Arrowtown. Um, all right. Chuck P says I'm leaving the motor camp in Fangamata. And Ooh. oh, did you go to the Donut Island in Fangamata? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> we did paddle boarding there. I don't know if you saw that video, but that's pretty cool. And he's heading to Rotorua. He books a bunch of cool thing there. Maori cultural event, white water rafting, zip line, and the Polynesian, Polynesian pass so far. Wow. wow, you're going to be busy in Rotorua, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah there is so much it. to do in Rotorua. Yeah, man. okay. That's that's really cool. That's a really good agenda. I don't yeah. think I will add anything like that. If you want, you can do the luge in Rotorua. It's actually a really cool, uh, really cool uh, stuff to do, but it's just for like good old friends. It has nothing to do with New Zealand. Just good old yeah. friends. <laughs> uh, where are you going after uh, Rotorua, man? Um, wow, he's busy. I love it. Duan Gersh says, hi, joining a bit late. That's okay. That's all right. Fashionably late. Let's yeah. just say, you, know, you were the one we were waiting for. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Itohowo says, so this means that I have to apply for a working visa. Can this be done without a job in view? Again, we do not have the right to give immigration advice on this channel. It is actually illegal for us to give you immigration advice. So please ask us questions about traveling in New Zealand, that the ice cream or the things to do there. We can't give you advice on immigration. Sorry. Christine Martini. Hey, we just did a question for you. Morning for Hama Hawaii. Hello. Mm -hmm. Aloha. Um, what are the popular New Zealand snacks and candies that makes good gifts? We've, we've just gone through <laughs> that question for you. We literally just did that about 10 minutes ago. You need to you rewind. <laughs> yeah, click on the rewind tab. We yeah. literally just spent 10 minutes talking to uh, uh, to everybody about that. Um, and we, we did it all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, rewind, Christine. Rewind yeah. like 15 minutes ago or something. Yeah. And when you watched it, come back and let us know what you thought. <laughs> Or maybe just keep on watching this, and when yeah. this finishes in about half an hour, you can just rewind and watch the beginning. But yes, we just did your question because you posted it in the comments. So just to give you a context, guys, if you miss the live session like that, it's totally fine. Just give us your questions in the comment of any of our videos. And this is the example for Christine right here. We literally print them, and we try to do as many as possible during the live session. So we, we never really miss a question. It's coming. It's just sometimes take a little bit longer. But Christine, we just answered your question. Um, mahalo. I hope that says that say thank you. But yeah, you're very welcome, Christine. Check it out. Uh, Clay Bryan says, uh, oh, he talked to Reggie Matthews. Say Patagonia is in Queenstown. That's really nice ice cream. Here you go. It does. Uh, yeah. It is my go-to every time I'm over here. So here you go, Reggie. We're not the only one to recommend you Patagonia. Yeah. But yeah, um, Patagonia is really good. Did you, Clay, did you ever try Giapo in Auckland? Because those ice creams are actually pieces of art. Like, I'm fantastic. <laughs> you don't want to eat them almost. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sagdas says, I will share this channel and NZ Pocket Guide webpage to Turkish Facebook group page only for users for working holiday visa to promote you guys and help other people as me. Oh, oh that's really nice. You. Awesome. Yeah, if you guys feel like sharing, you know, we can bring this channel to 15,000 subscribers. And the website, you know, it's a it's a data. It's like literally the Bible of traveling in New Zealand. So yeah, yeah. share it. You're gonna help a lot of people, and people actually are gonna be thankful. Yeah. Gerfado say thanks a lot for the detailed answer. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're very welcome. But yeah, check out uh, those articles, man, on nzpocketguide.com. Definitely, uh, that's gonna help you a lot. Uh, Duran Gersh says to access from a web uh, from a website from New Zealand, use a VPN. Yeah, that's uh, what Laura was talking about. One that's on the computer and not directly in the browser works best in case the website checks for B VPN plugging in the browser. So yeah, so you can actually download an actual different software rather than using one in the, in, in the, in the browser. But New Zealand companies are not that high tech. So the one on the browser most of the time works very well. <laughs> Just from our own experience, because uh, yeah. we use that very, very often. Very, very, very often, let's be honest. Uh, Reggie Matthew said, thanks, we guys. I'll definitely try those places. Yep. And, oh. uh, you know, send us pictures of you with, like, all those ice creams. So we're just really jealous. Um, all right. To be fair, we had some pretty 
amazing food last week when we were in Oakland. If you have a sweet tooth, okay, Reggie. Sweet tooth, yeah. If you have a sweet tooth and you want an epic dessert in Oakland, you can go to a place called Oko. It's O-K-O. And then you, all, you order the Volcano Signature Dessert. It's not cheap. It's about $20. But first, that's a full meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it is absolutely amazing. The dessert literally is like a volcano and erupts in front of you. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Don't tell him too much. Don't tell him. <laughs> Leave him those surprise. Okay, okay. But, uh, but yeah, you, you're really going to like that. Um, all right. Alexandre. Oh, there is a, I'm pretty sure he's French. Alexandre Carrière um, says, Hi, guys. Uh, we bought a van and planning for traveling the south and in March. We are here until October. Where would be the top three cities, cities where to sell our van and the best time to do so? Thanks. Uh, the best time to sell your van will be between uh, September uh, and October. So that's a good time for you. And the best cities to sell them at, that is not three days, just two. It's going to be Christchurch in Oakland, and the best one would be Oakland because there is everybody arriving in Oakland wanting to buy a van. Yeah. So hands down, that would be Oakland. Second, that would be Christchurch, but way below, and there is no third or fourth. Um, it's maybe going to be a bit Queenstown at a stretch. It's a struggle. At a stretch, maybe Queenstown. I think it's going to be a struggle. Uh, and actually, if you pick a third one, I would pick Toranga. Oh, yeah. There is a big market for cars over there. That's yeah, what okay. I would say, but yeah. Um, so... Yeah, but sell it between November and October. And you'll be, sorry, September and October. And you should be all good. Um, so, yeah. But make sure you travel enough in between, obviously. Uh, Christine Martini say, thank you. I'm just joining too. Malo, mahalo. Nice one. Vensi Da King says, hi, guys. I'm watching uh, you from Poland on Saturday. Hey, Poland. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. Um, so, yeah. So, for most of you guys, it's Saturday. But if you if you don't know, for us, it is actually Sunday morning. So it's kind of like, you know, the quiet time. Actually, it's summer right now in New Zealand. It's bloody raining here. Yeah. It's been, been the first time it's rained for quite a long time, though. Yeah. All of, the whole of the, well, the North Island especially is just orange right now because yeah. it's been so dry. So, yeah, it's been pretty hot the last couple of weeks. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, Reggie say thank you to Clay that was recommending the Patagonia ice cream as well. Um Definitely, it looks like the consensus is on Patagonia here. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think Japo is pretty up there as well. So you know, try both. Um, and Reggie also says, "Hey, do I have to take the gondola ticket in advance or just go s there straight?" You can just go there go straight. straight. There's yeah. no need to actually book this kind of things in advance. Neither, like everybody always asks us, like even in Queenstown or in Rotorua or Bo just go there, book it. Like they're not that busy. And they would always, always be happy to take your money. So <laughs> Yeah, they'll never turn you away. Yeah, yeah no need. Um, New Zealand, low Telugu Abbey. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I probably destroyed that, that word. Mm -hmm. Anything to do in Christchurch on a rainy day? Yes, if you go on nzpocketguide.com, you will find an article on things to do in Christchurch on a rainy day. You just type rain Christchurch and you'll find it. Or uh, if you check on this channel, we already have a video of that. It's about 20 minutes long, and we go through a ton of things to do in Christchurch on a rainy day. So, yeah, plenty of things to do. But uh, the Canterbury Museum is a good start, and the Arctic Center is also a really cool start as well. So, yeah, two things for you, yeah. plus a video to watch. Yeah, watch some of our videios. What about that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Van C. Da King, I know it's Sunday. The one thing I love about New Zealand are the beautiful landscape. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. When are you planning to travel in New Zealand, Van C? Are you coming up soon? Or? And uh, then Clay says, Japo is definitely somewhere I plan to go when I go to Auckland next. I've heard nothing but good things. I hear it's pretty unique. Well, we won't spoil it for you, but yeah. yes, it is. <laughs> um, definitely unique and definitely awesome. And Sagda says, and I will then, I will tell them, don't, don't ask, ask about immigration. <laughs> you don't have, a good idea. You don't have to tell them, don't ask about immigration. We just don't have... Like, we're not upset, right? Because we know, like, everybody that shows up, you get new every time. So it's okay. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's also frustrating for us to not have the right to talk about such a big subject. It's just, that's how it is. And when you go and you live in a country, you have to abide by the rules of that country. That's it. So we never upset that someone kind of say, oh, you know, ask us this question again and again and again. We just yeah. explain why we can't because otherwise you know it's just not fair as well we just ignore or we just say no it's not fair we yeah. just explain it's to you this is why i'm not answering it's not because i'm a mean person <laughs> because i literally don't have the right to all right should we go through another question in the meantime we do a, we do a quick short one right here 
Um, oh, yeah. I, I like this one from Nitish. Shall I read it? Okay. You've done a lot of talking. I feel like I should give you a break for two seconds. Okay, then. Okay. So, Nitish Agarwal on YouTube asked... I bet you were great now. <laughs> no, I think I nailed it. Um, hi, I have been following your channel for some time now, and I would like to thank you for your work. Keep it up. I'm planning to travel to New Zealand this June, July for around 15 to 18 days. I would like to understand, understand, apart from skiing, is there anything else we can do in terms of adventure activities? Me and my wife like to trek a lot, but being the winter season, will this be feasible? What about river rafting and scuba diving? Will that be feasible in winter? Looking forward to your response. All right. So first, I love how polite that question was. I thought that was absolutely delightful. It so was. Thank it you was very a much, delight Nitish. Delight to read. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nitish. And um, yeah. So what we're going to be doing in this uh, in this video right here is that we're going to be talking about the adventures activities in New Zealand, which are really popular, and we'll tell you where we will do them in winter because you can do almost everything in New Zealand in winter. Seriously, it the, the season doesn't really affect that much. Um, yeah. You know, can you do something or not? But um, let's get started with whitewater rafting. So whitewater rafting is open pretty much everywhere in New Zealand, aside from Queenstown, which yeah, is Queens, the one I know we close. Queenstown closes during the yeah. winter. But, so the yeah. one thing that may happen is that you may find that some whitewater rafting company have a bit less tours in winter. And you will find that this is pretty much the same thing for all the adventures activities. Yeah. So instead of having like a tour every hour, for example, they may just have two tours in the morning and two and one tour in the afternoon or vice versa. And that is pretty much it. So as long as you plan a bit better with your timing, you will be absolutely fine to do so. Now, if, you, if I was to pick a place to go whitewater rafting in winter, just because it can get a little bit cold, I will pick somewhere on the North Island because that will allow you to just be a little bit warmer because the North Island is significantly warmer in uh, winter than the South Island. So to do whitewater rafting, I will either pick Rotorua, which does whitewater rafting in the Kaituna River, which includes the highest raft white, commercially raft uh, waterfall in the world. Um, so Rotorua, or I will choose Mohaka rafting, which is on the, uh, ooh, what's the town they starting with? Uh, it's near Napier. Near Napier, yeah. there you go, I had a blank. <laughs> uh, so Mohaka rafting near Napier, which is a really cool place to do whitewater rafting in winter as well. And a cool thing just to add about that is Mohaka rafting actually um, puts on tours, even if there's only two of you in the in the in the raft, because some tours may have minimum yeah. amount of numbers that they can have until the the tour goes ahead but the really cool thing about Mohaka is that in winter when it is quieter and it's more likely to be the case that you're the only ones on the tour they will still still do the tour for you exactly yeah. and you can see us just Laura and I doing the tour in winter and you have a video of that on this channel so just type Mohaka rafting m-o-h-a-k-a rafting and then nz pocket guide and you'll find us yeah next up scuba diving where would you do scuba diving in new zealand um, in winter? yeah so like robin said the north island is warmer than the south island well pre pretty much all year round but um especially in winter and one of the basic even one of the top sort of scuba diving spots in the country is around Poor Knights Islands, which can be accessed from Tutukaka, just a little bit north of the city of Whangarei. Um, and they do scuba diving um, all year round from there. They will give you really good wetsuits to keep you warm, really thick wetsuits. Um, and yeah, they can take you to various places around the Poor Knights Islands, which is really like has an amazing array of marine life. Um, and yeah, around some beautiful islands, which are yeah, uh, basically wildlife sanctuaries. So that whole experience is really amazing. And yeah, also during winter, you do get the opportunity up there to swim with seals. There's a bit of a seal colony on the rocks over there. Um, so after you've done your scuba dive, you might get the chance to go and snorkel with the seals in the water, which is an incredible experience. And we do have a video on all that on um on youtube so if you just search um poor night silence scuba nz pocket guide you will pretty much come to the right video cool another good place is the bay of island as well it's a good place for scuba diving now skydiving um for skydiving same thing because it gets a little bit cold and when you kind of start skydiving you know you jump from the plane it gets really cold and everything so to get the best experience i will do it on the north island and i will pick the bay of islands to do that 
The Bay of Island is the thing all the way on the top of the North Island of New Zealand. And it's a pretty cool place to uh, do skydiving there because on good weather day, they even let you land on the beach, which is quite awesome. Another good place will be Tauranga. Mountain biking. Uh, so for mountain biking, Laura, what's the thing to keep in mind in winter? Yeah, so mountain biking, like some trails could be closed if there's a lot of rain, you know, that can wash um, some of the trails, make it super slippery and unenjoyable to ride in if they're too muddy. So with that in mind, I would choose to go mountain biking in one of the places like Topar, which the landscape around there is volcanic. So the rock is porous, meaning that the water basically just drains right through and dries up quite quickly. So you have less of the worry of having muddy tracks and their trails are basically suitable all year round. For hiking now, um, hiking is available all year round in New Zealand or pretty much everywhere. There are thousands and thousands of hiking tracks in the country. There are a few very popular, like super long hike, like the Great Walk in Milford, uh, the Milford track that closes in winter. Um, is it does close in winter? Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. Close, yeah. I, I just you just nodded. I was like, am I wrong? It's an obvious thing, but yeah. So it closes in winter, uh, so you may not be able to do this one. But there are some amazing hikes to do all around. If I was to pick one to do one of the Great Walk, I will do the Abel Tasman um, Great Walk, which is really awesome, and you go alongside the coast. It's really amazing, and you can also do a lot of day walks over there. So I will do around the Abel Tasman area if I was to pick one area, but again. So many hikes, and and uh, we can talk about hikes for actual weeks. We could be live for a whole week, no sleep, and talk yeah. about hiking in New Zealand, and we will not even have finished talking about everything. Yeah, so, just yeah. to add to that, though, also a lot of hikes would be, um, a lot of hikes are closed during winter if they are in mountainous regions yes. where there's going to be snow. So, for instance, a popular hike that many people have on their agenda is the Tongariro crossing, but it's very, you cannot do that alone in winter. You need to either be a skilled mountaineer with all your, you know, your crampons, cra crampons and, and all that, or you go with a guide, with a winter guide um, and do the experience like that. But like, yeah, for just bear in mind that doing, you know, mountain hikes and things like that is going to be a little bit more limited in winter. For sure. All right, moving on to dolphin swimming. It's a very popular activity to do in New Zealand. And if you decide to do it in winter, the town of Tauranga um, has pretty warm water. They have bottlenose dolphin. Um, and uh, they have, like, the, the boat is really big, really well equipped. And the way they do dolphin swimming as well is that you're not, you're not jumping from the boat and having to swim toward the dolphin. They actually and you hold on to a bar next to the boat and they kind of track you at very slow speed so the dolphins swim near you. So it gives you a really cool experience without having to exhaust yourself and and um, and, and and also you know having to swim too far and then having to swim back and everything. So it's not too much of a of a hassle and everything. When it's winter and you're a little bit more cold, you may want a more straightforward experience. So I think dolphin swimming in Toranga will be the best one in winter. Moving on to blackwater rafting, which is also a very popular activity, kind of caving, basically. Yeah, so blackwater rafting is kind of the term for doing the sort of tubing or caving tours that you find in Waitemo. There's two different companies that do this, one called the legendary blackwater rafting um, company and Waitemo Adventures. Um, and that can be done in winter as well. Um, and best place to do it is in Waitemo because yeah. that's pretty much the only place. Well, there is a place you can do that on the West Coast um, in the South Island, but that actually tends to be uh, having a few less tours in winter. So I definitely would recommend doing it in Waitemo. Um, and yeah, the only way this would, the tours would be cancelled after, you know, a lot of heavy rain and the level, the water level in the caves can go up. But this is definitely um, not, you know, this is definitely an exception. It's not the rule. And um, so generally you can do uh, blackwater rafting anytime in the winter, as long as it's not a lot of rain. And so you can find videos on the channel, on the channel right here. And we've done all that in winter. Actually, our guide told us that because it's inside caves, right, the water is already quite cold. So you get really thick wetsuits that keep you really warm. And between the, the, the coldest day in winter and the warmest day in summer, the water temperature in the cave is, is as only a two degree Celsius difference, which is very little, um, just because since it's the cave, it's not really that affected by the different temperature. So it's a great place to do that, um, to do that there. And uh, lastly, oh no, not lastly, a cruising. Where would you take a cruise? Oh, uh, it's my turn to say. 
Mm -hmm. uh, for cruising, so taking a cruise in New Zealand, a lot of people like to go on the boat for a day and experience a bit more of, uh, of what New Zealand has to offer from the water. There are a ton of cruises all around New Zealand. There are plenty everywhere. Um, for example, in the Bay of Islands, there are some amazing cruising available. But because it, in winter, a lot of companies decide to just shut, there is way less option available. The one place I think is best to cruise is actually Milford Sound in winter, just because Milford Sound looks so much better better under the rain it looks amazing well under the actually rain. the the climate in uh milford sound there is actually less rainfall in winter than there is in summer well what she said but <laughs> for my experience when i go in winter it usually rains usually <laughs> yeah. wet so it's really amazing there and um the boats are gigantic really super well equipped so it's a super comfortable cruise you have beautiful big windows so you get to see most of the cruise as well you're not crammed into a tiny boat because sometimes if you take a cruise tour it's a very very small boat so you know if you want to go inside well you kind of have to fight for space so those boats are really big and everything yeah. so it makes it for a super comfortable experience so my one cruise that i will pick will be in uh in, for summer in, for winter in new zealand will be new fort sounds um, all right, so that is all our tips on uh, what to do, where to do some of the most popular activities in New Zealand in winter. As a quick reminder, winter in New Zealand is when, Laura? It is from June to August. And if you did find this video useful, like, subscribe, make sure to hit the like button to say thank you for all the hard work. Uh, share it with your friends and join the community. And more information is available on nzpocketguide.com. Thanks for watching. All right, let's go back to the live chat. Uh, where were we? Uh, Venzi. Venzi says, Venzi da King says, I don't know, but one day I'll go to New Zealand because of the landscape. Uh, but I'm still a teenager, but I'm watching your video to learn something interesting about New Zealand. Awesome. I cool. love that you're getting uh, yourself inspired. But hopefully, as soon as you get to, uh, to, to travel and everything, you will have known so much from watching our videos that it will be not stressful at all as an experience. Christine Martini says, where are some popular and affordable shops to buy jade green stone And would you say, would you say is the average price for a Punamu necklace and earring? Um, all right. So let's straight away talk about pricing. It so depends on the artist, the shape, the stone itself, the, you know, different how marks on the stone, is. how big and everything. Prices range and literally from 10 bucks to probably 20,000. So anything in between. And in shops, you will find from 10 to, to 10,000. So yeah. prices would so depend. You usually would, have like a yeah. bit of a budget section, you know, on one of those yeah. sort of turny sort of displays yeah. where you'll find your maybe 20 to, it's more like 20 to $50 sort of necklaces where they'll have like maybe this big of a yeah. um, of little pendant or earrings. So there's that sort of thing, but it really, yeah, like Robin says, it really depends on uh, if you get the most grand pieces of carvings, they're going to be much more expensive. There's, um, yeah, so, yeah, it really depends on what and, there is, yeah. And where to buy it, we will send you to a town called Hokitika. It's on the West Coast. There is a ton of them over there. There is a ton of shops, so there is a bit more competition. you find some great ones. If you want to, you can even carve your own, and you can find videos of us doing that there. But Hokitika would be the place to buy it. Yeah. It looks like you're here mostly to buy things, Christine, between the, the sweets and uh, the chocolate <laughs> and, and the green stone. Uh, are you flying to New Zealand just for shopping? Um, all right, so Alexandre Carrière says, awesome, guys, thanks for the answer. And yes, we are French-Canadian. Hey, yeah. um, Tabernac. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what they say, like, uh, damn. Oh, right. Yeah, I okay. don't know. It's just a mocking between French, French and French-Canadian. I don't know. I yeah. just, it just came out of my mouth like that. I spent <laughs> some time in Quebec and in, um, and in Vancouver as well, and uh, I, I love that place also. Keep up the good work. You re you were really making a difference in our travel experience uh, and getting the most out of New Zealand. Oh, that feels good. Oh, nice. That's nice. Thank you, Alexandre. <laughs> um, merci beaucoup. Ça fait plaisir. Um, and Jesse Savage says, if I get a working holiday visa from the US, plan to stay 12 months and bring around 17,000 New Zealand dollars, how many months should I spend working a job to fund the other months living and traveling? It really depends how you want to travel in New Zealand, right? You could do the entire 12 months with 17 grand if you decide to do everything on a budget. Um, 
To be comfortable, I think I will say like you would need to try to work for about between three to four months only because I know you Americans have a good work ethic and you work a lot and everything. So I think you do really good for yourself. Um, so I would say between three and four months on travel and you're 17 grand and you'll be able to kind of have a decent trip in New Zealand. It won't be the flashiest and fanciest, but it will definitely be a really decent trip seeing and doing a lot, which would be really cool. Yeah, um, if, you, if you consider maybe with your travel experience, uh, you know, doing mostly like free activities, like hiking and stuff around the country, that would definitely be a really uh, easy way to keep the costs down as well. Um, yeah. And especially if you've got so much time in New Zealand as well. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So if you do quickly the math right here in my head, I'm just thinking like, okay, let's say you work four months, right? That's give you eight months traveling around. And um, so in four months, try to save 3000 New Zealand dollars and the rest you're spending on trying to you know first co paying your expenses but also having fun and everything still saving three thousand dollars will require you to save quite a lot but um i still think you will be able to do a lot especially if you're on a budget so now you'll be left with twenty thousand dollars uh twenty thousand new zealand dollars to spend over eight months right so that is a pretty decent uh decent budget if you consider that's two thousand five hundred new zealand dollars per month of travel um, that's definitely comfortable for traveling around the country. So yeah. that's the quick math, uh, math I just did in my head for you, JC. Obviously, it's not an exact science. You know, please understand that it's not an exact science and everybody travels differently. Yeah, everyone has different yeah. tastes. Everyone, you know, prefers to eat out more. Some people you know, yeah. like to make their own food. Some people want to do whitewater rafting or skiing most days. Other people want to just do hiking. So obviously, it depends on what your I don't know, just how much money you spend on a daily basis. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we've done like the super cheap travel and the super expensive travel. We've done everything in between. And uh, yeah, you will be able to find a good balance. All right. So um, if you guys have any extra questions or if you do have any follow-up on any of that, make sure to put them in the comments of any of our videos. We're super happy to answer all your questions. Otherwise, we will be back here next week. We do that every week. Um, so it's at exactly this time. If you're watching us live right now, it is at 8 a.m. New Zealand time, uh, which on your side of the world, if you're in the UK, it's 8 p.m. on a Saturday. If you're in France, it's 9 p.m. On, um, on a Saturday as well. If you're in the USA, it's 2 p.m. EST and 11 a.m. PST, like uh, those in California that we're watching today. Um, if you are in India, it's in the middle of the night on Sunday. I'm sorry. So it's Sunday morning at 12.30 a.m. And if you are in Australia and are trying to recover from a hangover, uh, it is going to be 6 a.m. on a Sunday. In the meantime, thank you so much for um, for taking the time to watch our videos. It really means a lot to us. Thank you so much for liking, for subscribing and all that. We actually are on the last stretch to get 15,000 subscribers right now. So it's all thanks to you. And yeah, we get to come and chat with you guys every Sunday because you are awesome. So again, thanks a lot for watching. Keep on traveling awesome in New Zealand. Keep on asking us some questions. And uh, yeah, we'll make sure to help you out. Absolutely. Do you want to say goodbye? I'll say goodbye. See you next week. <laughs>